Success 2016, Module 2, Part 5. In this section, we will be importing data into a table from a text file. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, you should have already created the owner table. In the last segment, we imported this design, um, table design from an access table. And then we also modified it. So you should have completed those steps. Once we have the file in place, we will go ahead and add some data. And like I said before, I think the reason they do it this way on our assignments is not because it's required to type data into the table before you can import into it, but it is a good way for us to check and make sure that our table is set up correctly. So our first field is the owner ID. So that's going to be 2310. We're going to add this record to have your first name and your last name. So go ahead and type those. And then you can type in any phone number that you want. Or you can use the information in the text, which is on page AC94. And if you want to leave the state as Wyoming, you don't have to type it because that is what the default is set to. It will fill in automatically for you. And we'll add a second record. Now, if you find that your data is organized in a different order, than the order that it's listed in the text, that should tell you that you need to go back and review the table design. Your import is not going to work if the fields are not in the same order as mine or as that they are listed on page AC94 when you're doing that data entry. Now we might want to resize some of our fields. So if we just do a best fit on each column then it will resize our fields appropriately based on the data that is in each column. I'm going to go ahead and save the changes. That, remember, is not saving the data but it is saving the changes in the column width. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to close the table. The next thing I want to do is I want to actually do the import. So again, that's going to be found on our external data tab. We're importing from a text file. So you're going to go in the import group and you're going to choose text file. Now again we have to browse to our file and you're going to find this under the Q, Q drive files that you downloaded. It would be under the access one module folder. You're going to see owner.txt so go ahead and choose that 
and say open. And now we want to append that file. So when we click on the option to append it, the first table that shows up is the first one listed alphabetically. That is not the correct table, so you need to make sure you change that so that it will append into our owner table. Click OK. This is showing us what's inside the file. Now what a delimited file means is that each field is separated by something such as a comma or a tab. You can see each of our fields is separated by commas. Now each of our field is also enclosed in quotes so that if there happened to be a comma inside one of the fields, you would know that the quotes were enclosing the data in the field and that wasn't supposed to be separating it. So for example, if I wanted it to say pincher, comma, junior, then that comma would have to be inside the quotes so that it knew that was part of the data. A fixed width column um, or type would mean that the first four digits would always be the owner ID. And then maybe the next 25 characters would always be the first name. So if the first name was only five characters long, you would then have 20 spaces before the next field started. The last name would always start at the same point and be maybe 35 digits long or however long each field was. So you'd have a lot of blanks separating each of the fields and the fields would all begin in the same character position. So Excel has or Access has determined that this is a delimited file and that is correct so we're going to go ahead and say next. Then they said, here it says, the comma is the character that they feel is separating the fields, and that is correct, so we can leave that alone. And then it also tells us that the text fields were enclosed in quotes. You can see there's other options for that. And those are both correct, so we do not have to change either one of those. So we'll say next. We still want it to be called owner, so we will say finish. We're not going to save our import steps as we discussed before. That would only be done if you had to repeat this import multiple times. So we're going to close that. And when we open up our owner table, you can see that there are additional records now available within that table. You do not have to save if this is all you wanted. Once they're imported in, they are saved. However, I probably would want to resize these fields again because as you notice, for example, address, some of them don't fit. Same way with city and email. And then you would want to save those changes. So I'm going to go ahead and close the owner table. And that concludes this part to our video series.